just in years again, courtesy of dance music scene, scene stuff. So it's courtesy of RA. <clears throat> Pretty news concerning a new Bergheim resident has been announced, courtesy of RA, by the name of Fadi Mohem. I haven't actually seen this gentleman play at Bergheim yet, as you guys mostly know. I am a bit of a Bergheim slut, and I go there basically twice a year, even though I'm nowhere from there, and I'm over here in the UK. I tend to make a bit of a you know, yearly pilgrimage over there to try and listen to some of the best DJs in the world, in one of the best clubs in the world that plays anything concerning dance music i mean it's not just techno it's house it's all that's good stuff they play in panorama bar in the in the in the room downstairs the triple x room and shit i mean they have a really a very wide broad range of genres they play in the Berghain nowadays it doesn't always kind of you know really rest on the techno thing it kind of depends on what kind of night you're really up to but it seems like ever since they reopened <clears throat> post pandemic maybe because of just circumstances and because the world has changed they basically it looks like we're prioritizing a lot of their kind of friends and family i wouldn't say only people that are based in berlin but it seemed that they were really pushing to have a lot of people who are basically part of the local community a lot of people that are part of the extended regulars kind of um universe that basically populates the majority of that club which is quite nice right a lot of the people that you see queue up in that guest list queue some of them are obviously friends of djs or friends of people who work at Bergam. a lot of those people are basically regulars who basically get the opportunity to put their name on the guest list so they can kind of have an advantage to kind of get in early or they get in a regular queue and the bouncers recognize them and they always kind of let them in also so that's pretty nice to see going forward um but there has been i feel like more owners put in a lot of the resident djs and more owners put in just promoting the local friends and family and i feel like this year bar none has seen probably more announcements concerning Bergheim residents than i've ever seen in my life maybe because beforehand it wasn't as a popular of a space and people maybe because the whole social media night clubbing or clubbing scene is not as big as it was prior but i never think i've heard i don't think i've heard as many announcements from Berkheim concerning residents and i beforehand because i remember i forgot who the lady was before um who was it there was two ladies that got that got residencies beforehand and then now there's this guy called uh fadi moham the ladies before i think it was lakuti before fadi moham and it was another lady too i forgot her name um who was who's got the residency recently so it's pretty nice to see them pushing this and i think also for guys like myself guys and girls like myself who are kind of up and coming djs who will eventually love to get the opportunity to play in Berkheim once or have the opportunity to become a resident maybe sometime in the future it's nice to see that they are giving kind of newer people in the scene an opportunity to become resident even though someone like Lakuti is somebody that's been fairly established in the scene I still feel like she kind of started quite late in life and is kind of new in general maybe not to the kind of the people that are in the know that know what's up but she's still a fairly new kind of quote-unquote face and I feel like all three of the ones that have been promoted to residence so far in Berkheim are fairly new faces so it kind of gives the people coming up like myself encouragement that you could also make it up and I guess if you're even it, forget me because i'm in london and i'm all the way over here but i guess even if you're from there and you're familiar with these people you've raved with them before you've seen them out and about you bumped into them at record stores it's pretty nice and reassuring to be like oh cool it's not as far away as i think it is because i think i mentioned it plenty of times on here but i've mentioned basically said i think me trying to pursue this djing thing is mostly because it's one of the best hobbies in the world and it'll be nice and it'll be amazing and it'll be so kind of it'll be the biggest privilege in the world to turn it into a professional gig but it's also because i just love clubs i love to be able to play in some of the best clubs in the world that i've kind of visited over the years such as robert johnson and the like that'd be great to kind of see them and i would have liked to have played in a place like the school but obviously it closed down that was a real shame so that's kind of part of it right to have that kind of ability to be able to play let's say um what does dixon do dixon says you know, he does like 100 gigs a, a year right let's say if i if i said i wanted to like because dj and i don't want it to be my entire life i want to do other things also but let's say i had the ability to play like 50 really key dates a year which would include like all the popular part all the popular festivals all the popular promotions in terms of different promoters around europe um all in the best clubs 50 dates a year all over across the place that'd be fucking amazing to go and see in it but i think I mentioned a few times on here that legitimately DJing is one of the most hardest professions to ever break to break in nowadays, especially in the creative or in the arts, whatever you maybe call it. Because I mentioned I was speaking to someone about it the other day. It's the only art form I think, especially in music, or it's the only you know art. Yeah, it's the only genre, or whatever you call it, right? It's the only area in music that doesn't require you to have like a distinct talent in kind of making the music or singing or whatnot, right? 
the bar of entry is really low because you could just buy a DJ controller from any store for as little as 20 bucks or maybe second hand, even less than that. And you can basically hook it up to some pretty easy to download um, music management software online and essentially get to mixing. Right, using the same kind of layout that most DJs use in clubs. And it's not going to be the like for like, one for one, but you can kind of get the feel of what it is to be a DJ by just downloading some free software and using your controllers on your own home. And then if you want to kind of progress upwards, you can get your own set of decks, whatever it may be, blah, 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 blah. And obviously, you don't have to create the music. You just download the music, you buy the music, you legally download it, whatever you want to do. So the barrier of entry is really low. And I think if you have decent enough taste, and if you have an ear for recognizing what's working, what's not working, and you kind of figure out how to make mixing work for you. Because I remember when I first started DJing, I used to be obsessed with watching videos on how to beat match and all this sort of nonsense. It doesn't matter really. The more you go, and I think the key to it is going out a lot, going out a lot and going to see DJs or going to go to, going to particular party promotions that you're not really familiar with and going to see people that you don't really know too tough and seeing what works or doesn't work, going to see really popular people that are commercially successful and seeing that they're not that great or seeing that they are amazing. Those are things that will open your eyes. And one thing it did open my eyes for me was that it made me realize quite soon when I got started in this scene was that mixing was never important the most important thing was to have good taste and to have the ability to um, to sequence your set properly in in the same respect as an album it's, it's all well and good having your album mastered perfect you know to perfection but if the sequencing is all fucked up it doesn't really matter very much i mean some of the best albums in the world aren't really mixed that well but the sequencing is just impeccable you know each song kind of fits after each song and i think the same thing goes for a dj set and um so yeah so basically the barrier of entry is really low you know everyone can get involved cost of entry is, is basically you know not peanuts for the most part and if you have a good taste, you have a good ear for what's working, what's not working, you can become pretty successful pretty quickly, especially if you've got a little, a little kind of, um, if you've got a little kind of a thing that you use that you kind of lean into, whether it is you're really attractive, whether it's, you've got like an interesting face, whether you've got a cool bit of style, whether you dance a particular way behind the decks, whatever it may be, cool, interesting name, interesting background. If you've got that kind of thing on top as well, you can make it work pretty quickly for yourself. But again, it's still difficult to do. It's not like every single attractive guy or girl out there that DJs are successful and no, they're not it's really hard to kind of break through um so when you do see people breaking through it's kind of it kind of gives you some level of encouragement okay cool he did it so I can do it too because like I said it's a brutal brutal career to try to pursue it really really is difficult especially when you're starting because especially in the UK there's not many places to play if you're just getting started it makes sense as well because not a lot of clubs want to take a take a chance with somebody they don't know they don't want you to chase away with the punters um they don't want to hire you and pay you money and you don't bring anyone through the through the doors. There's a lot of onus on ticket sales and not a lot on kind of resident DJs and building a good community or scene around DJs and nights and days and whatnot. It's a bit mess, it's a bit of a mess. So it's really hard to get through. So when you do see these stories, it is quite comforting to know, okay, cool, it is possible. You just got to put your head down, work, and then eventually things will come your way. That is what you'd hope would happen in it. But big up Feddy Moham anyway. Enough about me. Quickly read the news. It says, yeah, Bergan's new resident, Freddie Moham. There you go. The news was confirmed earlier today, July 25th, by the Berlin Club in-house booking agency, Ostergut, which now represents Moham. Um, he's the latest addition to the roster, which follows the likes of Lakuti. I said, yeah, I said this year alone, it was Lakuti, Sedef Adassi, and Jacko Jacko. Born on the outskirts of Berlin, nice again, a, a local person playing there, being a resident. Began, so if Mohan began, he's making waves as a producer in 2017, which he debuted his EP called, um, his EP landed via work records. Since then, he's also had records out on, whatever that word is, um, Spandu, um, Clockworks, and plus collaborative EPs with Right Hat and most like most recently Ben Clock. So loads of Berlin alumni he's been established with. Mohan's first gig at Berlin resident was a club on Saturday the 24th of August with Fidel, um, Nini H, Robert Hood and more. Oh, I'm going to miss him on that weekend, unfortunately. So yeah, big up him. He's got a podcast out at the moment now with RA as well. So if you want to check that out, definitely go and check that out as well. He's got a recent episode that he put out on there. But yeah, big up Fatty Moham. It's nice to see you recent DJs being announced at Berghain because it means that we all have a chance to. We all have a chance to.